It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop Along Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, Death Paints a Picture. Hoppy's horse at the moment is picking his way through the mesquite beside that of California's as the two men ride across the great Flying K Ranch on their way back to their own spread, the Bar 20. And as they ride through the night, threading their way through moonlit arroyos and between ghostly Joshua trees, lifting their arms to the stars, Hoppy's thoughtful silence is becoming slightly irritating to his partner, California. Oh, gone it, Hoppy. You can't plow a field just by turning it over in your mind. Huh? What's that? Well, if you decided to quit the bar 20 and go to work for the Flying K, you might as well tell me. Quit the bar 20? What are you talking about? Well, ain't that what old man Kingsley wanted to talk to you about? Since Ben Garrett disappeared, he's been looking for a new foreman for the Flying K. Why else would he send a message asking you to ride over and uh, talk with him? Better not jump the conclusion so fast, California. You're liable to go lame. First place, it wasn't Mr. Kingsley who sent that note to me. Huh? Uh, well, I thought... Yeah, I know. I thought he sent it too. But when I walked into that country club they call a ranch house, Mr. Kingsley wasn't around. It was his wife, Elaine Kingsley, who wanted to talk to me. Yeah? <laughs> no fooling? <laughs> hmm. Now, there's a woman worth talking to. I can't get over a hoppy why a gal so young and pretty as she is would want to marry an old goat like that Kingsley. He, he must be more than twice her age. Maybe, but that's none of our business. No, no. Uh, what she want? Uh, is it a secret? Between you and me, no. She wants to find their brother. Brother? I uh, didn't know she had one here, Bob. Well, it seems he was visiting her from the east. An artist named of Rory Victor. An artist? Eh? Yeah. He went out to paint some of the saloons at Poca Mesa. That's the last she saw of him. She sent Ben Garrett out looking for him the next day, and Garrett disappeared. Mm, I see, I see. Ah, uh, seems like the last one who saw Ben Garrett was a stable hand named uh, Juan Lopez. Yeah, he used to work for us. Seems like he told her I might be able to locate Garrett. Uh, but she'd rather you'd find her brother. Is that it? If I find the one, I think maybe I'll find the other. This way. Hey, hey, where are you going? Uh, this route takes us right through Ghost Town. I know. But, uh, Hoppy, not at night. Them tumble-down old shacks are haunted. Now, now, why go this way? Because Ben Garrett was headed this way with a stranger the last time Lopez saw him. Come on. It, Hoppy, they say the ghosts of them miners who used to live here. Wait. Oh, come on. Uh, there's nothing uh, around here but ghosts and... Uh... Look where the moonlight hits that clump of chaparral. You see what I see? Yeah. Someone... Someone's, someone's lying there. Let's have a look. Ben. It's Ben Garrett. Yeah. One of your ghosts put a bullet hole through the back of his head. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Death Paints a Picture. After discovering the murdered body of Ben Garrett, foreman of the Flying K, Hoppy and California ride back to the Flying K ranch house the next morning, accompanied by the sheriff. Gordon Kingsley, the rich Easterner who owns the ranch, is out, but his lovely young wife, Elaine, tries to answer their question. But I tell you, Sheriff, I don't know where my brother went. Rory is so... so unpredictable. 
Surely you're not trying to hint that that he did it. I ain't hinting, Mrs. Kingsley. I'm just trying to find out. Seems to me it'd have been a lot better all the way around if you'd notified the sheriff right away about your brother's disappearance. Then Garrett would be alive today, and there'd be a lot better chance of finding your brother. But there's still a chance of finding him. There must be. I, I know he didn't take the regular stagecoach out of here, and he didn't take any of our horses or, or rent one in town. You're sure? Of course. I've already checked. Besides, he didn't have any money. At least, not very much. A few hundred. A few hundred? Oh, that'd be enough to get him a fur piece from here. But he didn't. He left his things. He wouldn't have gone without taking them. Of course, they weren't much. An old suitcase with practically nothing in it except a few worn-out clothes. Oh, poor Rory he was here to regain his health. We persuaded him to come west and stay with us. I told you about him, Mr. Cassidy. Yes, uh, you did say, however, he was kind of footloose. <sighs> yes, he... He was never one to stay anywhere very permanently, but he wouldn't have gone away without telling me. He's a brilliant artist, Mr. Cassidy, brilliant. He wanted to stay and paint a while. The West inspired him. Well, maybe so. Where'd you say Mr. Kingsley went this morning? Oh, he rode off to the Upper Forty. He's having some of the boys lay out a golf course for him. A golf course? Uh, yes, Gordon bought this place to retire on, not to make money. Uh, I reckon I'll ride up and have a talk with him. See you later, Mrs. Kingsley. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Ah, uh, California and I'll be mosing back to the bar 20, Mrs. Kingsley. There's work to be done. I sure hope your brother... Mr. Cassidy, wait, please. Yes? You promised to look for Rory. Ben Garrett was my friend. I'm going to do my best to see to it that the man who murdered him hangs. Oh. If I happen to run across your brother in the process, it'll be accidental. I hope I find him for you, but you understand... Yes. Yes, I understand. But please, if you think Rory did I'm it... pretty sure he didn't do it. Uh, what do you mean? Your stable hand, Lopez, didn't get a good look at the man he saw riding off with Ben toward Ghost Town. But his general description of him sure doesn't jibe with the one you gave me of your brother. Well, I, I have a little picture of Rory. Here, here in my desk. I used to wear it in the locket. Here. It was taken over five years ago, but... He looks just about the same. It may help you to recognize him. Thanks. Uh, by the way, I was thinking there may be something in the stuff he left behind that would give us a clue. You mind if I have a look? Oh, not at all. It's upstairs this way. Nothing in that suitcase but a mess of dirty shirts. Hey, here's something inside the shirt. What is it? A pencil sketch. A dog-eared, beat-up pencil sketch. A landscape. Oh. Say, your brother really could draw on her, couldn't he? <laughs> yes, he was always sketching little things like that. Hoppy, uh, look at the way he drew them wooded hills with that road winding up to the crest of the ridge. Why, that's as pretty as anything I ever saw. Yeah, but that's a funny place to draw a windmill. Huh? Why? Well, look at it. It's one of those steel ranch windmills used for pumping water. Only he puts it on the side of a public road. What difference does it make? You know, this scene is very familiar. Well, you probably saw that oil painting Rory did. Evidently, he painted it from this sketch. It's hanging in the living room downstairs. Oh, I see. Did he bring that painting with him when he first arrived here? Yes, and that's about all he did bring with him, except those ragged clothes. Stephen! Stephen! Oh, My husband. Where is that confounded houseboy? Excuse Stephen! me. Gordon! Gordon, I'm upstairs. What's going on here, anyway? Where are all the servants? It's their day off, dear. Don't you remember? No, uh, what the devil? Who are these men? Mr. Kingsley, I'm Hopalong Casty, foreman of the Bar 20. This is my partner, California Carlson. Howdy. Well, what are you... They found Garrett's body. He was murdered. The uh, sheriff just told me. If you hadn't gotten him mixed up with that drunken, no-good brother of yours... Gordon! I lose a first-rate foreman on account of a worthless bum who'd be better off dead. You'd like to see him dead, wouldn't you? You hate him because he's got something you haven't got. A soul, because he doesn't give a hang for your money. Huh, that's rich. Ever since he showed up, you've been milking my bank account for his benefit. Why, you even pawned your pearls to give him money. You liar. I told you I put them away in my safe deposit box. But I'll be hanged if I'll lower myself to take them out just to prove it to you. Well, all I have to say to you, Elaine, all I have to say is that you'd better be wearing those pearls when we attend the governor's ball at the state capitol next week. Because if you don't, if you try to beg off, I promise you that will be the end. Come on, California. We'd better follow the old saying, live and let live. Excuse us, folks. Mr. 
Uh, what are we riding back here to Poker Mesa for? Uh, this sure's a long way around to get back to the home spread. Oh, we'll get there by and by, California. We got things to do first. Uh huh. First, we're stopping by the sheriff's office. Now that they've got a telegraph station at Poker Mesa, I think maybe it'd be a good idea to have him send a description of Roy Victor to Fort Worth Ranger headquarters. This picture Mrs. Kingsley gave me is all the sheriff needs. Say, do you think uh, maybe Mrs. Kingsley's brother is wanted someplace? How do I know? I'm like the sheriff, just trying to find out. While I'm at the telegraph office with the sheriff, you ride along and check every honky-tonk in Poca Mesa to find out who saw Rory Victor last. Find out anything, California? No, I've been in five of these dives. Nobody knows from nothing. Uh, did the sheriff hear from Fort Worth? You bet. California, that picture of Rory Victor fits the description of an escaped convict named Rory Varick. What? Like a glove. Every detail. The Rangers wired that Varick broke jail after serving five years of a ten-year stretch for robbing the bank at Crown Ridge. Jumping catfish. Uh, hey, that ain't far from Poker Mesa. You're telling me. There were three men in the holdup, according to the report, but only Rory Varick, alias Victor, was caught. And that's not all I found out. California, this fellow Varick, or Victor, as Mrs. Kingsley calls him. Excuse me, pal. I hear you're looking for a fellow who paints pictures. What makes you think so? Well, I kind of overheard you ask him a barkeep. Yeah? Uh, that's right. We've been looking for a man who was last seen uh, heading this way to paint some of the honky-tonks, uh, an artist. He disappeared uh, two or three days ago. That's right. His name was... Uh... Rory Victor. Yeah, that's the man. I hired him to help me work my claim back in the desert apiece. Yeah, we've been looking for him high and low. Yeah, I can take you to him right now if you want. I'm just on my way back. Oh, you'll sure be doing us a favor. Well, let's get going. Oh, incidentally, my name's Reno. <laughs> Yeah, this is the place. Uh, Reno, uh, you mean your claim's right here in Ghost Town? Yes, sir. Under that abandoned old smelter plant. Hard to believe you could find gold there, huh? It's easier to believe that than to believe you're a miner. Huh? What? Uh, why, Hoppy? The zombie's no miner. Look at his hands, his face. You don't stay this pale mining gold in the desert. I've been keeping quiet, waiting to see what you're up to. All right, what's your game? Let's have it. My pal, I'll let you have it, friend, between the shoulder blades. Yeah, one move. One move and I'll fill you full of buckshot. I'll shoot, I'll tell you, I'll shoot. Easy, them. Dusty, easy. All right, boys, raise them before my pal behind you. Let's go with that sawed-off shotgun. That's better. Now I'll just take your guns. Why, well, you're low. What down. do you want? What's this going to get you? It ain't what it's going to get me, friend. It's what it's going to get you. Namely, a visit with your old pal, Rory Varick. Oh, excuse me. You said his name was Victor, didn't you? Hey, hey, some more friends of Rory's, huh? <laughs> more friends, huh? It beats me. It beats me. All the friends he made out here. You know, first that Rube, Garrett... Shut and your then trap. It... Garrett, then it was you. You got Garrett out here... To... Take it easy, friend. You killed him. <laughs> He'd give us trouble, we'd give him lead. Put me your lip. <laughs> oh, Reno, I was only trying Come on, to... Go open make... the door of the smelter plant and light the lamps. I got him covered. Okay, okay. You're making a bad mistake, mister. Yeah, well, get going. We'll talk about that... Down there in the cellar. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy in Death Paints a Picture. While looking for Mrs. Gordon Kingsley's missing brother Rory, an escaped convict, Hoppy in California also hoped to solve the mystery of Ben Garrett's murder. After being held up by two strangers in a desert ghost town, Hoppy realizes that they are Garrett's killers. The two, Reno and Dusty, force them down into the cellar of an old abandoned smelter plant in Ghost Town. All right, this'll do. Ah, lamps and everything, eh? You boys have this place fixed up like you're figuring on settling down. Why not? We got plenty of privacy. No windows in them two-foot-thick adobe walls. A solid iron door at the head of them stairs. Nobody can hear nothing. No. <laughs> not even if I was to let go of this here shotgun. Even. Not even if I was to let go. He didn't, uh, you know. I thought you said Rory Barrett was here. Well, he is, pal. Right there at your feet. Kick them old sacks away, Dusty. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right there, lying at your feet. So you murdered him too, eh? Oh, little accident, friend. Dusty here got a little trigger happy. <laughs> Derek's been missing for days, but he doesn't look like he's been dead more than a few hours. Hey, you're a detective, ain't you? Yeah, he was alive till just this morning. It's a wonder he hung on this long with them slugs in him. But that ain't here or there. The question is, where did Rory Varick hide that $60,000? Shit. <laughs> Sixty thousand? Just what are you talking about? Sixty thousand, pal. The dough Varick double-crossed us out of. He stashed it away somewhere in the hills around here just before the law grabbed him. That much we know. <laughs> I see. So you two were Roy's partners in that bank holdup at Crown Ridge. Right, ain't you? I guess maybe you don't know nothing about, uh, the windmill. Windmill? Yeah, you give yourself away, friend. I saw it in your face, so he did hide the door around the windmill. Windmill? What uh, What are you talking about? Oh, so you don't know. Now, that's too bad. Five years it's been that Dusty and me have been waiting for Rory to get out of the pen. When he does, we lay for him out here. But my little pal has to shoot him before we can get him to talk. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Derek's been lying out here, out of his head, jabbering about a road, a picture in a windmill. I tried that word, windmill, on for size. And it fitted you, chum. Yeah, yeah, Rory promised him a share, I bet you. Yeah, to help make a getaway. Copy is where these varmints are both local. Loco, eh? Well, maybe you'll remember if I start by shooting your ass off. <laughs> Put on that gun. The only windmill I know about it. Yeah? Go on, Cassidy. It's in a picture. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Go on. Where's this picture? So help me, I'll kill your pal and then you. If you think I'm choking... It's hanging on a wall. Wall in the Flying K Ranch house. Satisfied? Maybe. Okay, Dusty, let's go. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll send someone to let you out if that picture's where you say it is and if it means what I think it does. But if you've been playing me for a sucker, pal, I'll be back myself. Me and Dusty. In person. piece of this old smelter furnace off, we may be able to pry that door frame away from the door. Yeah. Uh, Hoppy, just what was that doggone windmill got to do with all this? California. Nobody builds a ranch windmill out in the hills alongside a public road. My guess is that Roy painted it in the picture just to mark the spot where he hid the bank loot. You mean uh, it's a picture of the real place? Of course. It's a spot just about a mile this side of Crown Ridge. A painting like that drawing is a detailed picture of the area. Well, for the love of air, uh, say, do you think them polecats will recognize it? Reno will, probably. Chances are he went over that route more than once when they're rehearsing for that bank job. Now, come on, this piece of iron will do now. Let's get at that door frame and try to get out of here. Yeah. Uh, but after we get out of here, we can't be sure they left our horses outside. I know. I only hope we get to the flying K in time. Uh, <clears throat> we'll never catch them. We've been here almost an hour already. Uh, we'll get those killers, California. We'll get them if it's the last thing we ever do. Sure seems a lot of horses tied up at the ranch house. Yeah. Say, there's the sheriff on the veranda. Hop along. What's happened? murdering skunks held up Mr. and Mrs. Kingsley. What? You mean... Yeah, they shot and killed Gordon Kingsley. Come on in. Uh, Doc Mason just finished examining the body. How long does he figure Kingsley's been dead? Not more than a half hour. He was shot through the heart. Died instantly. Half hour? Those rattlesnakes couldn't have gotten very far. Mind if I ask Mrs. Kingsley a few questions? No, I'm making you a deputy on this case, Hoppy. Ask all the questions you want. Mrs. Kingsley. Uh, yes. Would you mind telling me uh, just what you and Mr. Kingsley did this morning after I left your house? Uh, well, it was it was the servants' day off. We had lunch in town at the mansion house. Yes. We we came back later than I expected. There was someone someone in the dining room. Gordon went in, and then he came running out. Those two men, they, they followed him and shot him. Oh. I'm mighty sorry about this, Mr. Kingsley. Did they take anything else besides that painting? Painting? Yes, the one Rory did. 
been cut in the frame. Hey, what's this? Something valuable? Only as evidence, Sheriff. You see, Rory painted that picture while he was doing time in prison. What? What are you talking about? Maybe you don't know that that window in the picture meant Mrs. Kingsley, but you did know Rory escaped from the pen, didn't you? What are you saying? It's not true. I'm afraid it is, ma'am. Where's Rory? What happened to him? He's dead. Killed by the same varmints who killed your husband. Oh, no. No. California. Time's getting short. Run over to the telegraph station and send a wire to Crown Ridge Sheriff. What? Explain the situation. Give him the location of that imaginary mill on the Ridge Road. Here's that drawing. The Crown Ridge Sheriff will have time to arrange a little welcome party. I get it. Stay there and wait for a message saying whether they caught him or not. You bet. Now, Hoppy, what the dickens? That picture, Sheriff, is a map to a stolen $60,000. This is all absurd. Why in heaven's name should I have been so anxious to find my brother if I thought he was actually an escaped convict? Because he stripped you of all your cash. And because you needed the money to redeem the pearls you had to wear to the governor's ball next week. The pearls you told your husband you still had. You knew Rory had $60,000 buried somewhere near here, didn't you, Mrs. Kingsley? Hoppy! Hoppy! They caught him! What? Well, they couldn't have, not this soon. But they did, here. The telegram. Got an answer, just a minute ago. Let's see that. What does it say? Yeah, California's right. Crown Ridge Sheriff says them two sidewinders were already there when he and his posse got there. They were up to their necks in a hole they were digging. Wait a minute. Those two bandits who had to leave more than a half hour ago to have gotten up there that soon. No, it isn't possible. Uh, What do you mean, Hoppy? I mean that it isn't possible for them to have been here 30 minutes ago. It takes over an hour of hard riding to get where they are now. I mean that they couldn't have killed Gordon Kingsley. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. Those two coyotes didn't kill Kingsley. Who did? Yeah, the only other person with Kingsley. Was... Yeah, two from three leaves one. You, you liar! I was just subtracting. Why should I kill my own husband? Could it have been because Reno and Dusty gave away your little secret when they came here to steal that painting? They greeted you not as Rory Victor's non-existent sister, but as Rory Varick's divorced wife. Wife. What kind of a frame-up is this? Didn't you realize we'd find out? After all, when I got that report from Fort Worth on Varick's record, you were in it too, Mrs. Kingsley. All right. So he was married to me once. But I couldn't tell Gordon about him. It it would have ruined my marriage. Roy blackmailed me into giving him shelter here. I couldn't help myself. Is that why you killed your husband? What are you trying to do? I love Gordon. But when Reno and Dusty spilled the beans, it wasn't past him to threaten to put you in jail for concealing an escaped convict, was it? This is outrageous. After they left with the painting, you probably spent some time pleading with Kingsley. But I don't guess it was much use, was it? So you got that Spanish derringer and shot him. Spanish derringer? Yes. The one you buried in that potted palm in the conservatory. Oh, what, what, Derringer? If if you found a gun someplace around here, I, I don't... I've think... got it wrapped here in my bandana. Silver mounted with your name engraved on it. Thirty-five caliber. Same size bullet that killed Kingsley. Don't reckon you see many thirty-five caliber handguns around these parts, do you, Sheriff? That's the only one I've ever seen around these parts. The only one. You better take it. You'll be needing it for evidence at the trial. Hoppy, how in tarnation did you know where to look for that there Spanish derringer? <laughs> well, you take a gal as pretty and clean looking as Mrs. Kingsley, never a hair out of place. Kind of surprises you don't know all of a sudden some black dirt under her fingernails. Like she'd been digging with them and hadn't had time to wash. Well, oh, well, they're gone. So while you were at the telegraph office, I moseyed around, sort of snooping about until I noticed those potted palms in the conservatory. Saw there'd been some digging in them recently. Well, that's about the whole story. Funny, I never noticed her hands were sturdy. Well, with the kind of gals you go out with, California, I reckon you're just used to it. Yeah, reckon I... Uh, <laughs> uh, what uh, What do you say? Well, <laughs> doggone you, if that ain't Oh, the we're late. Like getting so home. Far. Let's go. Good 
goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy and all the gang. We'll be back soon, and of course, we hope you'll be with us when Hoppy and California really ride through another thrilling and exciting adventure. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Death Paints a Picture was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>